Hi, this is Don and I'm an old school kind of guy. Now, I've seen uh, a couple people in some fish forms posting solutions. That's solutions to people who are asking, how do I lower the pH in my tank? I've talked about this before, but I'm going to just put it all together in one. And that's this video. And then when I say that, it'll probably come up again. All right. One of the solutions somebody is out there saying, and I've seen more than one person suggest it in a YouTube or on Facebook, or in a certain fish form I like to follow, Anyway, their solution is to add vinegar. Vinegar will lower your pH. Now, I've seen that more often with saltwater people. I don't really pay a lot of attention to saltwater. It's never really interested me. But even there, others will tell you, uh, be careful. If you're adding vinegar to lower your pH, it's not going to stay low. You're going to have to keep adding vinegar. And you have to know how much vinegar you're adding to how much water. And then every time you do a water change, you have to add the appropriate amount. And you have to keep track of your pH very closely so that you know um, what's happening. Because the vinegar is going to be used by the bacteria. Bacteria loves vinegar trust me on that so what happens um, the bacteria will turn it into carbon dioxide you know so um, you're probably better off just pumping carbon dioxide into your tank <laughs> um, carbon dioxide will actually lower the pH of your tank unfortunately um, it's not just the beneficial bacteria we call it but any bacteria loves uh, vinegar and like I say, it's a temporary solution because your water has its natural buffering effect from the various minerals and such. And your water is going to seek its own level. And vinegar is just going to mask it for a little while. Another solution I have seen is somebody suggested using lemon juice. Because lemon juice is acidic. That's why they like vinegar too. Yeah, low pH in the, especially in the vinegar. Lemon juice. Um, let's just say you can do it, but you know people are going to use a lot of very derogatory terms to you. One of the nicest ones will be dumb. <laughs> why? Um, well, lemon juice is going to act just like vinegar. It's going to lower it for a while. you got to monitor carefully, uh, do it with every water change, find the exact amount that works for your tank, etc., etc. It's a temporary thing because the bacteria is going to eat up that lemon juice and uh, it, it, your water buffering itself is going to, to tend to go right back to where it was. However, Lemon juice is worse than vinegar because lemon juice got sugar. And there are a lot of other things uh, much worse than high pH that will grow because you add sugar. Not that pH grows, but you know what I mean. Those things growing in your tank um, are going to be much worse than having high pH. <coughs> um, so, how do you lower pH? Well, you can go out and buy a pH lowering buffer chemical that it'll work. I, I buy that aquarium pH buffering all the time. I don't use it in my aquariums. I use it in my hot tub. Hot tub needs lower water uh, pH than what we have here. And the aquarium stuff's cheaper than the stuff they saw at my spa store. <laughs> so I buy it all the time. Don't use it in my fish tanks. Stuff works pretty good but I prefer a more natural approach um, again if you do use those chemicals 
remember you have to figure out how much works for your tank based on the size of the tank um, the pH of the water coming out of your tap and fish load and so forth and so on um, once you you know you measure every day until you got it figured out to the exact science and then you measure before you do a water change and after you do a water change so that you know you got it right so that's one choice not mine my favorite choice is I use driftwood now driftwood is going to have tannins tannins going to turn your water yellow to brown to, to black depending on how much you get if your pH is still too high add some more driftwood here's the thing again when you do a water change now you don't want I have 8.8 .8 pH water you don't want to add 8.8 .8 pH water into a 7.2 tank unless you're only doing like 10 percent which means you should be doing water changes more often now if I have Rift Lake cichlids over here and I've got 8.8 .8 water coming out of my tap I can do 80 percent water change every day and they're not they couldn't care less so you have to know your fish you have to know your tank and so forth and so on <clears throat> by the way for Rift Lake cichlids I wouldn't add any driftwood they like my high, high pH water um, I would add calcium though because I don't have very hard water um, in terms of the uh, degree of dissolved minerals total dissolved solids in my water is actually relatively low for such high pH off topic let's get back on it um, another choice is to use um, peat moss now with peat moss you can put a good layer underneath your substrate and that'll help lower the water for you if it's not lowering it enough put some peat moss in a, a nylon or a mesh bag fine mesh and put it in a filter or just hang it in the tank if, if you don't care about the vi visual effects and peat moss will help lower the, the water's pH even faster than driftwood again it has tannins in it peat moss is just decaying vegetation that's been buried for a long time and uh, so any organic matter as it decays has tannins in it it also will lower pH that's what driftwood's doing, that's what peat moss is doing and that's what catapa leaves do almond leaves now I have no idea who came up with this some genius said I'm going to sell catapa leaves and they're from India and I'm going to sell them and I'm going to make a fortune because all those stupid Americans aren't going to realize that their oak tree leaves are going to work just as good but I'll get the market first and so everyone will think mine are the best listen people any decaying plant matter is going to have tannins now I happen to like the almond tree leaves catapa leaves because of the way they decay and they're they're big and and uh, the fish really and especially my shrimp really like them um, so it's you know a nice source of extra food for them but almost any leaves will work um, you have to try and see um, do your own research and there will be some out there probably that aren't going to work or are actually bad for your fish so do your work do your research and like with the peat moss you might just add them in a in a nylon or a mesh fine mesh bag and see how they change your water organic materials lower pH faster than anything why do you think discus and cardinal tetras do so well in black water because that black water comes from extreme amounts of tannin because of all the decaying vegetation in their water 
So there you go. What's the best way to get rid of uh, high pH? Reverse osmosis, without a doubt. Beats all of my methods. Uh, I don't use reverse osmosis. The handicap to that is it takes some of the t total dissolved solids out, and so you got to replenish, uh, use fertilizers if you have plants. Um, I'd rather throw my high pH water in there and let my, uh, my driftwood and my leaves um, let them lower the tenants. Oh, chola wood. That's the chola cactus from Arizona area. That is real good at lowering tannin and lowering pH. Um, so there you go. Um, again, if you're doing a water change, I don't care which method you're using, water is going to change the pH of your tank. You have to understand the water coming out of your tap, the water in your tank, and you have to think about what you're doing. Um, adding CO2, I already mentioned that. Um, that'll lower the pH. Uh, how much? I don't know. Depends on how much CO2 you add. And everyone knows too much CO2 is bad. Um, so there you go. Um, uh, one, one last thought. <clears throat> Speaking of having fun, I like to have fun. You notice that? One last thought on lowering pH. High nitrates will lower the pH. <laughs> That's not the way I'd recommend it. Have fun. Bye.